All right, so I got a new toy. Let me talk about it just uh, a little bit. It is a 2006 Fender Factory Special Run, or FRS, uh, Stratocaster. It is the Diamond 60th Anniversary model. Anyway, uh, it's in a pretty poor state. It doesn't play very well. It sounds like poo. Uh, and it's been modified by the last owner. So this is the original Fender Atomic Bridge pickup. Not entirely sure. I have no idea what that sounds like. But it looks like it's been had at pretty good there. So I'm going to clean that up and we'll see if we can go ahead and fix that. Uh, and I'm going to restore that to original. Look at me restoring to something to original instead of modifying it. Yeah, for the time being, I am going to restore it to original and just live with it the way it is before I decide to do anything. Uh, I had some crazy ideas right out of the gate. Chief among which was swapping this pick out, which I don't like the look of, and I don't generally like humbuckers in the bridge position of a strat. I mean, it's a pretty cool looking pick guard. Jesus. It's a pretty cool looking pick guard. It is metal and it seems to be some sort of anodized, like brushed look. It's not my thing. Definitely not at all my thing. It's cool looking, but I would much prefer even just a white pick guard, but I'm not going to put just a white pick guard on it. But for the time being, I'd like to live with it stock. It's got some pretty thick frets. I don't really like super tall frets, but. I'll get used to it. Just about the best sounding pickup on this is the is the neck pickup, followed up by position number four. I like pretty well. That's coming out of there too sweet. I do not like that one bit. It's no bueno. So I had adjust I had had to readjust this guitar quite a lot when I got that the action was quite high. Alright. So I've dropped, I just dropped this pickup by about double what the manufacturer specifies. So I'm going to see if I can quiet this bastard down. See if I can get some of the shrill out of it. It's fucking awful. It's fudging awful. moment this thing's playing like a big old piece of poo. The action's still a bit too high for my liking. It was really high when I got it. Uh, I lowered it just so that I could play with it and see what's wrong with it, but it's... Buzzing like a big old cobra. So yeah, it's buzzing like a big old cobra, and I know that it's sitting at action that it shouldn't buzz at, so the frets are needing some leveling. So that's what I'm going to get to next, is leveling frets on this guy, although I do have one problem and one hesitation, and that is I'm pretty sure that this is a compound radius fretboard. 
I haven't checked it yet, I haven't pulled the strings off of it yet, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to find that when I pull the strings off of it and check the fingerboard that I'm going to find something like 9.5 up here, maybe 12 down there. If anybody knows, before I actually get to that, um, if this, this is a 2006, um, 60th anniversary, I have a sneaking suspicion that this is a compound radius, and I'm a bit afraid to tackle a compound radius uh, front job. So, that said, uh, I might do some spot leveling, which means I'm going to have to figure out which frets are rattling and what's causing problems and try to do it that way. But, uh, anyway, we'll see. I have to come up with a plan. So I'm going to take my time with this guy here. Uh, I thought I'd just give it a quick introduction because I do have a couple of quick questions about uh, you know, the radius of the fretboard, and uh, I am curious to see what this pickup is going to sound. This is the original bridge pickup, the Fender Atomic something or other. Um, I'm hoping it sounds a bit more Fendery for right now, the Seymour, Distun Seymour Duncan Distortion SH6, I think it is. Way too hot for me. It doesn't sound stratty. It sounds like it belongs in some sort of metal guitar. And this, to me, is not a metal guitar. This is not, uh, I don't know, maybe to some people it is, but this is, this is not, to me, a heavy metal guitar. This isn't. The neck's pretty thick. I find the neck fairly thick and chunky on this guitar. Not overly thick, but it's like a modern C shape. I think I would say that that's a sort of a C shape. And, um, yeah, it's a bit fat for my liking, that's for sure. It seems to it seems to ease up down here near the heel a bit. It seems to taper a bit. And another sort of curious thing is I find that the fingerboard material is thicker at the top than it is at the bottom, which is another reason it kind of leads me to believe just upon inspection. Um, and here I'll show it to the other camera. But you can see there at the top that it's quite a bit thicker, the material. than it is at the top. Which to me suggests that this is compound radius. I don't know. Maybe I'm dreaming. But it, it sure looks like it. Um, so that's the other thing too, is right at the moment I have it set up to a 12 inch radius down here at the bottom. Um, that's the other thing, what, <laughs> that's the other thing I need to investigate is, <coughs> what do I need to set these saddles at? I suspect it's a 12 inch radius, but I don't really know at the moment. Anyway, that's really the only problem with it. Um, it's got a few little dings, it's got one ugly sort of ding right there. Um, but apart from that, it's really clean. It's, I mean, it's got lots of splooch all over it, but, oh yeah, there was one other little pretty insignificant, even hard to film. There it is. Um, and, yeah, and that was the other one. So, but that's really no big deal. Apart from that, I mean, it's gleaming, shiny, there's no real scratches, and there's no other real scratches or anything in it. The headstock, which to me is the coolest part of this thing, seems to be in pretty good shape. Um, but it's clear that whoever set this up didn't have a clue what they were doing. Um, the owner claims, and he seemed like a real nice fella, so I'm not, I'm not disparaging him or saying he's lying or anything like that, but he claims he got it set up not too long ago at, uh, at a local guitar shop called Long and McQuaid's, um, and if, if he paid for that setup, oh, that's pretty, it's pretty shocking because the action was really high. It was sitting at, at least the, the, the low E when I measured it. Um, I went and I got myself, actually stopped up a crappy tire and grabbed one of these, I saw this little ruler, it's actually in 30 seconds, but it's good enough, uh, it has all the conversions on the back. Anyway, so when I went, when I measured it, this uh, was 8 64ths on the low E, 
and about six sixty-fourths on the high end. So way, way too high, way too high. I mean, that's not even acceptable fender, fender factory specifications. It's just not. Um, so I'd be really pissed off if I, if I paid for a setup like that. Like, what's a setup worth? I have no idea. I haven't paid for one in years. 60, 75 bucks. I'd be pretty pissed off if I got my guitar back like that. It doesn't seem like they've attacked the nut too much. The nut action seems actually pretty decent, so they don't seem to have touched that, but it seems like all they've done to avoid doing a fret job, or maybe they told them it needed a fret job and this was the only way it could solve it. I don't know. I don't know exactly what happened, but clearly it needs a fret job. So a fret job is something I'm going to have to investigate because I am pretty certain that, like I say, I keep saying, that I think this is compound radius. So I want to be pretty certain when I hit this thing that I, I don't mess it up. Um, so that said, uh, I think that's really all I'm going to talk about. I'm going to try and edit this video down to be pretty quick. But I was just hoping if anybody knew anything more about these things, maybe they'd drop it in the comments section and let me know what they know about these guitars. This is, I, I'm fairly certain, a made in Mexico guitar. Yes, it is. M said something or other. Um, and that is, if I can show it, that's the cool little medallion on the back. So yeah, it's pretty neat. It's pretty neat, and I'm very looking forward to uh, bringing it back to factory stock, at least for the moment. Uh, certainly, uh, I want to reassemble the factory electronics, if nothing else. If I even if I spend even if I put some new electronics in here, I will remove the pickguard in its entirety and put something completely different all the way around in there, which I can and might do. These here were meant for another project. In fact, I was getting ready to film it, but this is just a mint green pickguard with some pretty nice uh, pickups that I think will look pretty sparky in that. Um, so, I might do that. Um, but for the time being, for the time being at least, I wanna, I wanna get the original electronics back in there and just see what it sounds like. I might like it. I might like the original pickup, so. The, the, the previous owner said he hated it. Um, who knows, I might like it, I might hate it. And if I hate it, then, then I'm definitely going to plan B, which is to stick that other scratch guard in here. At least for a while, anyway. It's not gonna devalue the guitar to put a new uh, pick guard on as long as I save all the original, and that's what I wanna do. I wanna save all the original stuff in its entirety, and I'll just put something brand new and fresh in there. Um, okay, so apart from that, there's nothing really else to talk about. It's a pretty cool guitar. It's from 2006. And uh, any comments about um, anything you might know about this guitar, details-wise, would be much appreciated in the comments section.